Hello YouTube, Orcas Moriser here. I know what you're thinking. Seriously? This guy just made a two and a half hour video about Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. He made a freaking movie and he has more to say on the subject matter? I'm tired of his voice, it's annoying. It sounds like if you took a guy and then turned this whole segment into a self-deprecating insult. What, you didn't see that coming? And yes, even though I spent two and a half hours showing you how I felt the story mode should have been, there's one thing that I really did not get across, because it wasn't the point of the video. What do I really think about Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite? Do I love it? Do I hate it? Do I never want to see it again after obsessing on it for the better part of a year? Well, buckle up, because here is my honest opinion. Let's get an obvious positive out of the way first. The gameplay is phenomenal, and I'm referring to the core gameplay here, mind you. The combat, the Infinity Stones, all of that works together really well. Not every character is fun to use, but other characters who I have never liked to use before, like Chun-Li, are suddenly really fun here with the way the controls are set up. I do have a couple of gripes. I think the two punches, two kicks setup, like we saw in Marvel 2, is still inherently flawed, but that's mostly because we saw what it was like with a medium before and suddenly we don't have that. It still works really well in this game though, far better than Marvel 2. The only other gripe I have with the gameplay is that the Shoryuken motion is often replaced with a double down, and to me, that's a more cumbersome move, but I realize that's not the case to anyone. Still, I would have liked it if there was an option to do both on the field, or to swap it between one and the other. Oh, and if you're going to do that change, either do it universally, or don't do it at all. Shoryuken and Shadow Blade should not have different inputs, that's all I'm saying. But beyond that, the Infinity Stones and the Active Switch mechanics, I'd like to see something like that implemented into more team fighting games. Oh, and if you're wondering who my mains are, I'm honestly not too sure myself. I play as Venom, I play as Sigma, I play as Chun-Li, and I gotta think on it more from there. Now onto the presentation, starting with the visuals. There's no buttering this game up, it looks awful. It doesn't really have an art style to speak of, and yet it still somehow manages to breach that art style with several characters. Now don't get me wrong, some of the characters actually do look really good. In fact, I'm about to list every character that looks good. Doctor Strange, X, Zero, Ultron, Ghost Rider, Iron Man, as long as he doesn't take his faceplate off, Thanos, Nova, kind of, Hulk, Captain Marvel for the most part, Jetta, Firebrand I suppose, Venom, Sigma, and Black Panther. The rest either look out of place, awkward, or plain old awful. Spencer and Dante being the worst examples of how characters get rendered here. I mean, yikes. The locations are not exempt from this problem either. Most of them look incredibly generic. You have this great concept of fusing one location from each universe together to create something new and interesting and most of them don't capitalize on that for the interesting, and some of them, if I showed them to you out of context, you wouldn't even be able to tell if one or the other franchise was there. Sure, you have successful ones like Umbrella and one of the locations in New Metro City, and I guess the Dark Kingdom, although you can't tell it's the Makai Realm at all, but others are just completely generic. A random street a random dungeon inside a castle with gold and navy decor. Whatever the heck no moon looks like. And then just Avengers Tower, which I suppose was trying to be a mix of the MCU and Marvel vs. Capcom 1's version. You know, if you squint. Oh, and as a side note, X-Guard is a stupid name and there's a reason I changed it. And then there's the other part of presentation, the sound. The voice acting I'm not going to go into too much detail, you have some really good performances like Thanos, who sounds better from this actor here than he does anywhere else. You have new perfect casting for X and Sigma, who I hope to hear more of in a game of their own. 
Please, Capcom, just make it already. We have Jetta, who is not technically making his English debut, but this is so good that it might as well be. And everyone else, who is either reprising a role pretty well, or not giving it their A-game. Especially Eric Loomis as Iron Man. And we don't talk about Morgan. Ah, uh, but there's another and far more disappointing part of the presentation, the soundtrack. What were they thinking? Some of it's good, I'll admit, but the general idea behind it creates one of the biggest downgrades from a game to its sequel that I've ever heard. Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 has one of, if not the best fighting game soundtracks ever, and part of the reason was legacy music getting remixed into new and interesting forms. This included the Marvel side, which has had some of the tunes remaining entirely consistent since 1995. Looking at you, Spider-Man and Captain America, I'll get back to you in a minute. But no, for this game we have to get rid of that and instead make cinema-inspired generica based on the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Some of it was good, like Black Panther and Iron Man and Spider-Man, but a lot of it is just bland and boring and really hard to listen to. Hawkeye. Poor Hawkeye. That's not to say the Capcom side of the roster is innocent, because they took the complete opposite approach. These characters do get to keep their legacy tunes, except turned into dubstep electronica remixes that you could find on YouTube circa 2012. And again, some of them are still really good, especially Jetta. But it's still a severe tonal downgrade from the previous game. Except Morrigan, I think her theme might actually be better here because of the instruments they chose. And yeah, let's get to the part I was skirting around, the roster. It's inexcusable. This is not due to the lack of the former Fox properties. You can have a good roster without any of them present. And this is not a good example. Even if you follow the MCU to a T, which this game isn't exactly doing, hello Venom, Ghost Rider, and Nova, there are still some glaring omissions. Loki, Star-Lord, Scarlet Witch, Vision, Ant-Man, Falcon, and plenty more. And however large the Marvel side got to be, you can only imagine the Capcom side would be just as large. Except when they finally finished it with all the DLC, it was still lopsided. And the characters they did choose on the Capcom side, I don't know how to explain that either. Sure, you have great new inclusions like X, Jetta, Sigma, but then you have other ones that I don't know why they're still here. Like Frank West, as much as I like him. Spencer, who I don't think anybody likes. Nemesis, who is their Resident Evil villain of choice for some reason. Bottom line, you don't need X-Men to make this roster good, you just need to make it good. And then we get to the game modes, which for someone like me who does not have PlayStation Plus, comes down to four. Training and Mission, which are better for you if you're a competitive player than not, but it's obviously a good thing that they're here. Imagine if a fighting game didn't have a training mode. I'm sure you guys know an example that exists. The Arcade Mode, which... Functionally fine, but completely void of personality, and also completely void of arcade endings, which... Seriously, you couldn't do a single image with a bunch of text? Was that too much to ask? Instead, we get a fade to white, a congratulations image, and then cut to credits, which... By the way, remember when I mentioned Spider-Man and Captain America before? Yeah, their legacy themes are remixed for the credits. Why couldn't they have done that for the whole Marvel side of the roster? And then there's the original story mode, which, I'll be frank, if you want my opinion on it, look at the rewrite and see how much I did and didn't change. I'm not going to break down everything I did to change it. If you have any particular questions as to who, what, and why, ask them in the comments and I will try to respond to as many as I can. With all of that said, what do I really think on Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite? I think that it is incredibly fun and incredibly stupid, and I would recommend that you pick it up on sale. The gameplay is great. Certain aspects of it 
are really fun to do over and over again. The arcade mode, for as dissatisfying as the ending is, is still really fun to play. The Infinity Stone system is genius, but it is still wrapped up in a coat of obvious ugly flaws and nothing we do can change that. I do not believe it is worth discarding. I do believe that it is worth playing and even the story mode is worth checking out either for a laugh or a comparison or whatnot. A lot can be learned from it, but that doesn't prevent it from being any more or less than a mixed bag. Thank you for watching. If you haven't seen my rewrite yet, check it out in the description and the end cards as well as some of my other content. This is Morkis Moriser, signing off.